Tonight, my guests and I will be discussing building leaders and developing talent in Africa. I'm joined by Steve Smith, he's Senior Executive at Accenture, Nat Davies, Head of Interim Management at SICAN, and Jonathan Cook, Executive Director at Gibbs. Good evening, everybody. Thanks for coming in this evening. Steve, I'll start with you. Is leadership the single most important aspect of any organization? I would say it is, um, in the sense that if you, um, if you had a, uh, a product which was product which at the end of the day reached the end of its life cycle and ran out of space and time and so on, if you had the right leadership in place, you'd be able to in fact renew that organization and pull it through. So that's just one example, but I certainly believe it is the most important criteria in a business. Nats, do you think some organizations get too focused on leadership and, and put people on pedestals? And I think of companies um, like Apple with Steve Job at the top, where if anything happens to Steve Job, the company falls apart. It certainly can be a, a mistake that a lot of dynamic leaders can make, where it becomes more about the individual than about the, the leadership pipeline, the, the people that are around them, and the business, and, and the business's brand. So that certainly is a, a stumbling point for, for some leaders. And, and certainly in terms of, of great leaders, what's such an important component through that leadership cycle is that they are constantly going through a process of molding a uh, constant, you know, what works today for them might not necessarily work in a different organization or a, a different, different time, different stage in a business. So that, that constant process of development for that particular leader is also very important. Jonathan, what's your view on that? Is there a balance between having a strong leader and having a strong management team around that leader? They go together, really. Uh, in fact, you can't separate a leader from the person she or he is leading. And the management team is part of the, pr uh, the, the instrument, if you like, that the leader creates to um, implement what the leader wants to do. And the leader, in a sense, is also the creation of the team that supports him or her. They work so closely together. And one of the key aspects of leadership success is the degree to which you can pull together, motivate, inspire a team around you. Steve, uh, yeah, you want to try yeah, something? On that, on that point specifically, um, I think one of the key characteristics there for, uh, from a leadership point of view is the ability to be able to very quickly be able to identify what you've got in terms of your mm. leadership team and to be able to harness those respective skills because you don't always have the opportunity to have that much choice in the matter at time, points in time. Obviously, over a period of time, you can deal with, yes. with that. But it's to be able to um, be able to identify where those strengths are and to understand really that how you pull those various levers to be able to achieve the outcome um, is going to lead to the strong team. But without a strong leader, that's something that you, you're not going to be able to do. And one of the, the, the questions that a, a leader faces on appointment to a new position is how much of my team to retain and how much to change. Uh, because one can, one can destroy a lot of organizational memory by just kind of changing the entire team. Same, same time, sometimes to implement a new direction, often leaders are appointed for that purpose. You have to make some quite tough decisions about who you put in your team. That's if you're talking about leadership at the top, but of course leadership does permeate, doesn't it, mm -hmm. throughout the organization. I mean, do you think now that there could be, uh, I mean, we're discussing people coming in and making change in an organization. We've seen it a number of times in South Africa. Recently, we won't mention names. Leaders do come in, they do want to change the people at the top. Do you think you're then getting rid of talent that, is, that has the, the, the organization within it? I think the most important thing in terms of the, the leader entering into a business is to not apply a copy-paste model. So to first come off the base of, of understanding, regardless of, of where they're going into, um, gathering information, listening. And from there, they're then going to be geared to make better decisions to, to integrate. It's not necessarily a long process. It can happen quite quickly, particularly for, for seasoned leaders. And, and then make the right decisions. And certainly, sometimes you, you're going to need the, the general that comes in and rounds the troops up and, and gathers everybody together. And sometimes you, you're going to need the farmer that, that tills the soil and, and takes their, their different approaches. But to come in off the, the, right, the right base. Well, Steve, how, how does having a strong, focused leadership give a business a competitive advantage? I think that um, just interesting choice of words you use there, strong and focused. And I think that that's, that's, that's what is important. Strong doesn't necessarily mean, you know, as per the Jack Welsh's necessarily, it means potentially a leader who, who really has the vision, 
um, knows where he's going to, can communicate it effectively, and can really bring t people around him and her or her to achieve that objective. So strong and focused. Focus is then tying back to that vision, making sure that everybody's working in the same direction. And I think that that leads to um, the, the characteristics that, you know, where leadership has, has moved on to and the whole, the whole concept of collaboration uh, and the ability to be able to, to, to pull multiple diverse um, thoughts and people together across continents, geographies and so on is where, what you look for now in terms of the, the, the future leaders. Well, Jonathan, you mentioned um, just a little bit earlier about identifying leaders in an organization. Mm -hmm. Should that be left to the HR function within an organization? Should it be left to management? Should it be a combination of the two? It has to be both working together. One can't le leave it to the HR function alone because the, the line insight into what's required and insight into who's developing is absolutely essential. Nat referred earlier to the leadership pipeline, and I think wise companies do that. They, they stock the pipeline with people who are who are uh, ready to move up the next rung of that of that pipeline, if I can mix those metaphors. And um, HR has has to serve a function of advising line managers how to be, how to identify leadership, how to coach them, um, and also keeping records so we don't lose people in the organisation. But in the end, it's the line manager who really gets a feel for what people are doing and who's making a difference. Um, the, the concept of the leadership pipeline, which is sort of six transitions going up a large corporation, comes out of GE. And one of Jack Welsh's contributions in GE was to spend uh, a huge amount of his time as a chief executive going around the, the, the member organization, spending a day or two in each one with the line management, particularly saying, who are the stars in this organization? Where is the talent that we can, that we can nurture and develop? And I think that is one thing that we probably don't do enough of in this country or in the continent for, ex uh, for that matter. Um, we, we expect leaders to kind of pop up, uh, and some do, but there are other people who have the potential to become leaders if they were recognized, acknowledged, and given the opportunity to shine. More often we are in fact putting the plug on people, <laughs> putting a, a cork on the bottle, because we may be jealous or anxious about who might be emerging. And but surely by definition a leader is somebody who will shine regardless and who will pop up by himself. Or will leave the organization and find somewhere else to shine if you don't recognize them. I mean that there are some obviously some organizations that stand out as having strong leadership teams, people who have come through the ranks and you know that there will never be a problem about having a chief executive at that organization aren't there? I like what, what Jonathan said in, this, in, in terms of there are always going to be your, your shining stars, but in terms of the, it's such a precarious balance because you can have your movers and your shakers, they, they've got leadership ability, they go, out, they go over and above and they, they wow individuals. If you put them into that, that a leadership role that is beyond them too soon, you set them up to fail. And that doesn't have sustainability either. So, so the balance of developing and nurturing these individuals without putting the plug on them, but with also without putting them into a, a role that's, that's way above them too soon is, is mm. difficult. It's, it's quite a challenge.